Hi everyone, our today's video's topic is the nitinol. The nitinol is nothing but the alloy of the nickel and titanium. The nickel and the titanium both are used in equal composition to make this alloy nitinol. There are different grades of the nitinol such as nitinol 55 and nitinol 60. This particular number nitinol 55, this 55 number represents the percentage of the nickel used in nitinol. So this is how there are different grades of the nitinol. This nitinol is having a lot of applications from the personal applications up to the industrial applications. From it is used in the braces of the teeth. Also it is used in the NASA's several projects such as the NASA's rover missions. That particular rover it is having the tires which is made up of the nitinol wires. It is also used in the biomedical engineering. The nitinol stents used to remove the blood clots. This was the applications of the nitinol. The nitinol is having the different characteristics such as the shape memory effect and it is having the unique property that is nothing but the super elasticity or the pseudo elasticity. The first one that is the shape memory effect that we have seen in our previous video. We have learned about the SMAs that is the shape memory alloys. How does this materials undergo certain deformation at a lower temperature and after the application of the heat they again uh, regains its previous shape before deformation. So that was the property which is known as the shape memory effect. This particular shape memory effect it is we can see in the nitinol but over here the force applied in case of the nitinol is on a higher side we can go we can the the force ranges from the 10,000 to 20,000 psi that is on a huge amount of the pressure we can apply on the nitinol and after the deformation like when this particular majority when this huge force gets applied on the nitinol wire it gets deformed but after the application of the heat it restores its previous shape after the application of the heat the temperature range for this heat like the temperature range varies from minus 20 to 120 degrees Celsius. So this is nothing but the first property of the nitinol that is the shape memory effect. When we talk about the second property that is nothing but the pseudo elasticity or super elasticity. Guys we know about the elasticity. It is the property of the different materials. Like when we apply certain pressure certain force it will deform. But after the removal of that particular force, it retains its previous shape. So that is nothing but the property of the elasticity. This particular property elasticity can be found in majority of the materials in steels as well. Guys, we have seen the stress strain curve for the steels. In that particular stress strain curve, like we have seen the plastic region and the elastic region. Uh, but when we look at the stress strain curve for the nitty knot, we can see the elastic region is more than that of the in case of the steels over here guys the elastic region in case of nitinol is about 10 to 30 times more than that of the steels and over here the material undergo more deformation like before failure so this is nothing but the elastic deformation so this nitinol is having the more elastic region than that of the plastic region the strain it can accommodate that is around 7 to 8 percent of the strain it can uh, bear so guys these are nothing but the two different properties that is the shape memory effect and the pseudo elasticity or super elasticity so this is the reason guys this uh, like if we look at the stress strain curve for the nitinol like the elastic region is on the higher side so that's why it is called as a super elastic material or a pseudo elastic material so guys the name of the nitinol the nitinol got its name just because of the composition and the discovery of that particular alloy so ni stands for nickel t stands for titanium and nol stands for the naval ordnance laboratory that is the place where it got discovered so guys, in 1959, the two gentlemen, William Mueller and Frederick Wang, they were working on a certain project, the missile, which is having a cone shaped nose. They were trying to find out the, which is the best suited material 
for that missile cone the properties that missile cone should have uh, like a unique different properties such as like such as it could resist the fatigue it could resist the heat and the impact forces so they were trying to uh, find out a best suited material best suited alloy for this particular application and they landed up with a nickel and titanium alloy they landed up with a nitinol so after some research and after some experiment like they found that this nitinol is best suited for this uh, application and later in the year of 1961 they presented a sample in front of a committee they presented a sample in front of a committee they demonstrated the experiment and everyone is convinced that this nitinol is suitable for that uh, missile cone application so they performed this particular experiment and uh, like they impact that missile cone after the impact like missile cone is deformed in such a way that it looks like an accordion now this particular material is selected for this application and everyone is convinced that we can use we can go for the nitinol but one gentleman he like exerted heat by using his lighter and after that the deformation gets restored to its original shape and everyone is now surprised like how does this happen this particular nitinol got restored in its previous shape and then the potential applications of the nitinol were uh, realized to everyone but guys in the next 10 years from 1961 this uh, alloy is not commercialized just because of the manufacturing process its melting processing machining that these processes were extremely difficult in the case of nitinol so that's why during that particular time that alloy is not commercialized so that was about the discovery of the nitinol so guys now let's move towards the internal structure of the nitinol so guys this particular nitinol it is like at a lower temperature it is having the martensitic structure this particular martensitic structure it is extremely hard and it requires the more force to deform now this particular martensitic structure it is the monoclinic martensitic structure the internal molecular arrangement that is it is having the monoclinic martensitic structure but when we try to exert the force when we try to deform that after the deformation this monoclinic structure gets converted into the twin martensite the structure itself got deformed the internal structure gets deformed but over here the slip or as the failure does not occur while deforming so this particular uh, deformation is within the elastic region and that deform shape when we try to uh, increase the temperature of that particular deform shape it again regains and it again restore its previous shape the twin martensite which is gets formed due to deformation again converted into the austenite structure this particular austenite it is having a simple cubic structure and this austenite it is the initial position initial shape of that particular uh, nitinol nitinol material well guys that when we apply the heat to the uh, nitinol wire to the deformed shape so when we apply the heat to the deformed shape it again restores like the internal arrangement like it restores this uh, deformed molecular pattern again gets restored over here so the temperature at which the uh, this restoration process will occur that particular temperature is known as the transformation temperature and this particular transformation temperature can be vary by varying the percentage of the nickel and titanium there are four basic types of the transformation temperature that is nothing but the ms that is the martensitic structure gets start at this particular temperature ms mf the martensitic gets fully formed as that is the austenitic starts af that is the austenite gets finished like the structure internal sub structure gets starting point at its finish point there are four different uh, 
transformation temperatures and the range for this transformation temperature varies between from minus 20 degrees to 120 degrees celsius so guys over here in this nitinol the phase change occur that is nothing but the solid to solid phase change over here there is no kind of the atomic slip will occur there is no permanent deformation there is no failure of the material will occur at the higher stresses so this is the reason this so guys this is the reason nitinol is best suited for almost majority of the application it is used in the helicopters biomedical industry golf clubs teeth braces mechanical joints of bones aeronautical industries so it is used in almost every application so guys this is all about the neaty knot if you having any doubts any queries please leave a comment and guys please do subscribe to my education channel engineers academy if you want me to make another video on your selected topic please do comment so guys thank you so much for watching this educational video